Welcome to the second devlog of my progress through Project Fire. This month's focus was abilities, attacks, and art design. For the abilities, I was heavily inspired by MOBAs for how they show targeting guides when a player uses them, so I'm borrowing the look of how they do that. I made some quick textures that can be tinted any color in case I want to change how they look. The cool thing about this system I made is that I can easily create and swap out abilities to test them. For example, right now I'm casting a debug ability, where a rock falls from the sky and hits anything below. If I wanted a wall of fire instead, I could swap out the prefab that does that, so I can put it here, and now I have a wall of fire. However, the casting indicator is now incorrect, because it still shows a circle, but this wall of fire is a rectangle. So instead, I can change it to a rectangle. And now everything matches. So I can easily change any of these just by swapping things out. So I can make the indicator a plus sign, or I can make it a square. And for the abilities, I can easily swap that out as well. I can make it into this Nova thing. So it fires a bunch of projectiles outward. Or if I want it just to be a projectile, I can just make it a single projectile. All I had to do is swap out the prefab. Now with the projectile, this goes in a line, so this area indicator doesn't quite work. So instead, I can swap it out and give it a line and get rid of the area indicator. And now I have a skill shot. And for the Nova thing, what if I actually want it to be an AoE around the player? So let's get rid of the line. So right now we have Nova and I should give it a circle. But we want this to always be around the player. I can just check this self-targeted thing, and now it ignores the mouse, and it's always from the player. So I made this system to be very easy to create new abilities, and very little programming is required for it. So now I can spend more time thinking about fun abilities, and worry less about how to make them and how to program them. For attacks, I reworked how attacking worked with weapons. Everything looks the same in gameplay, but to understand what happened, I have to go into some technical detail. Previously, when a weapon hit the enemy, it would immediately apply the damage numbers, but this caused the issue of repeated hits. We'll visualize the player from above to see what happens. To borrow from fighting games, I'll show the startup, active, and recovery frames. When the player hits attack, the weapon will go into a startup animation where nothing happens yet. When it reaches this area, the weapon now has active frames where the collider is active and anything it hits or anything that runs into it will take damage. Then the weapon will go into recovery frames where it can't do damage and the player can't do anything else until it finishes. Now, the problem is in the active frames. If a person or enemy moves in a specific way, it's possible to make them take damage multiple times, which is not what we want. A simple fix to this would be to give the enemy an invincibility period, a hit stun, similar to the player, but this causes another issue in a multiplayer. If a player hits an enemy, another player hitting it at almost the same time will have the damage ignored, which can cause inconsistent damage. Take the case where one player has a weapon that only does one damage, and the other player has one that does 99. If the player with a weaker weapon hits the enemy, they do one damage, and the enemy goes into its invincibility time. Immediately after, the other player with the 99 damage weapon will hit the enemy, but the enemy is invincible now, negating all damage. Instead, I reworked the system so the weapon applies an internal status effect of the weapon damage that's unique to each player. When one player hits the enemy, it registers the status effect of the weapon hit with the player ID and the name of the weapon, then has a cooldown before they can do damage again, which is a short 0.2 seconds. Even though the weapon is still active, if the enemy manages to hit itself on the weapon in the very next frame, it will ignore the status effect since only one can be active at once. Now the other player attacks and applies their weapon status effect, and it'll do damage with its own cooldown. Both players can do their damage and won't inadvertently cause extra damage due to the active frames, nor will they block each other's damage. Not only does this solve the weapon issue, but it has an added benefit for abilities that do damage over time, like this flame wall, to not accidentally block other players from doing damage to the same enemy.
the image is counted correctly, everything is working as expected, and players will be happy. With the system architecture out of the way, I worked on a small sample level for playtesting, but it looks a little plain with the grid texture, so I did a quick arc pass. It's always neat to see how a little bit of art texture and shaders can go a long way in making the game look better. In addition to the textures, enemies have an intent indicator that shows when they're about to attack, and the player's shield now looks more like a shield and less like a plastic bubble. There's also hit particles when the player hits an enemy. For the map, there's lightly swinging grass and a water shader to make it look better than a flat blue color. That's all the art I could do in my extra time. I had to do more work to make this look better. The goal for next month is to add more enemy types and polish the overall gameplay to get ready for multiplayer testing. Thanks for watching, and good luck to your game dev projects.